Hello the world poppers, in this new video we have a new interview and our guest today is Brooke Lensiner. She's a Canadian folk and alternative rock singer and songwriter. Welcome Brooke. Thank you. <laughs> Tell us, how did you start in the music industry? Ooh, it's a little bit of a complicated answer. Um, I basically have been involved in music my entire life. Um, I grew up dancing competitively and my mom is a singer herself, so I was always involved in music. Um, yeah, but I ended up going to college for music theater. And after graduating from that program, I ended up um, working at Canada's Wonderland. Um, it's like a theme park in Toronto or outside of Toronto. Um, and, and they had a rock music show. Um, so it was all cover songs, but I, I kind of started thinking about pursuing more of like a singing career after doing that. But it kind of took me years to really think about writing music myself. Like I didn't really ever think I would write my own stuff. I kind of just wanted to cover songs and you know do stuff that I already loved. Um, and it wasn't until uh, I was pursuing acting as well and I was in a commercial um, with somebody who happened to be a music producer and I just didn't even know what a music producer was or what they did and they kind of, I became close with that person and they kind of showed me you know the other side of like that side of the music industry a bit more um and then i ended up meeting um the music producer that i work with uh, guillermo who's actually peruvian which is super cool um and uh yeah and uh, he really encouraged the music i had started to write and and we became good friends and and i ended up asking him to yeah produce um my like one of my first my first single and then from there we just worked so well together and i I don't know, it wasn't something I had planned to do, like writing my own music really, um, until I kind of already was just doing it and then realized like it was something I loved and maybe could turn into a career. Oh, is your producer Peruvian? Yeah. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, super cool. Uh -huh. he, he lives there in Canada or? Yeah, he does, yeah. yeah. He grew up in uh, Lima, Peru, but he moved to Canada. I I think, I know he came here when he was 16, but I think he went back to Peru after that and then a few years later moved to Canada. And now, yeah, he lives in he lives in Toronto for the most part, but he does go back to Peru often to see his family and stuff. Okay, so yeah. uh, I heard also a Spanish song, I mean, of Carla Morrison. Uh, yeah. You did a, yeah, you did a cover in Spanish. Yeah, and so. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to ask it also that um, how is your connection with the Spanish? Now I know that, and so... Oh, <laughs> uh, I, I don't speak much Spanish. I wish I did. Um, I went to Peru in, uh, I think it was September of 2019, so just this past fall, mm -hmm. with a friend of mine, and I spoke like no Spanish when I went there, and I felt kind of embarrassed about that, and I just really wished I could uh, speak mm -hmm. Spanish after that, so uh, since that I, I got the app on my phone, uh, Duolingo, that teaches you languages. <laughs> so I Spanish a little bit on that, but um, also it seems like the majority of my following is Latin American, so it just seems like a smart thing to, you know, be able to speak Spanish as well, so I'm working on it, working my way. <laughs> yeah. I, I love that song, Eris, too. It was, um, it was at the end of a movie. I can't remember what movie. And from the first time I heard it, I was like, this is such a beautiful song. And then I like looked up the translation of what the lyrics meant and loved it even more. I was like, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. what, a, what a wonderful song. So, yeah. And are you thinking in writing a Spanish song? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> One day maybe, I would love to do that. I It will take me a long time because I, I wouldn't want to make any embarrassing mistakes like I'd need a lot of help with someone who's fluent and you know but yeah, I would yeah. I would be really cool to do someday for sure or collaborate with someone who is fluent and you know can can we can write it together yes, kind yes. of yeah for your Latin American fans <laughs> yeah exactly exactly yeah. yeah well I'm a really big Jessie Reyes fan uh, she's a she's Colombian but she's um, a Canadian artist from Toronto and she mostly writes in English, but she has a couple songs in Spanish, and there's one I'm trying to learn. It's called Con el Viento, and it's just so beautiful. It's such a beautiful, emotional song, and it just, yeah, it makes me really wish I could write in, in Spanish, because I think Spanish is such a beautiful language, and, and the music is so incredible. 
Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, and I heard your single tragedy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. What was your inspiration when creating this song? Oh, man. Um, I went through a really rough breakup uh, last year. Um, honestly, most of my music is about relationships um, that I've been in, romantic relationships, and that one was a really, really tough one. I mean, breakups are always hard, but that one was especially difficult for me to get over, and it was a complicated breakup in the way that, I don't know, it wasn't, it wasn't clear to me what exactly the reasoning was. Like, I was given a bunch of different reasons for why that relationship ended from the other person, Um, and then a lot of mixed messages, and then we ended up kind of having a romantic moment together a few months after we broke up, and then it was just, it confused me a lot, and, and like, the day that that happened, I was literally crying while I wrote that song, like, I was just like, oh man, it's a tragedy, because I know I'm not, not supposed to love this person anymore like this, and, mm -hmm. and I know that they don't want to be with me anymore, but I can't help the fact that I just, I feel so brutally in love with this person still. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah and <laughs> that is your last single or? Um, so that one's actually not even released yet. That I just made a video for it, like in my apartment during uh, like coronavirus, COVID-19 lockdowns, but um, I haven't actually released it on like Spotify or anything. I haven't recorded it formally. I just kind of did it in my own apartment. But my last My last release was um, my EP, the About Me EP that I released uh, last November. It has five songs on it. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah and then so your video clip, Relax. Yes, yeah. Uh, how was your experience recording your first video clip? Oh man, um, it was really exciting. It was very stressful. Um, I had never done anything like that before and also because <laughs> It was only my second single, like I, I released the video two years ago now and um, I didn't really know much about, you know, like making a video or the the different roles people on set do with, you know, those kind of things. Like I've, I'd been as an actor, I'd worked on set and on camera, but I'd never as my own like creator been doing it. So I didn't really understand the exact role of the director, or the cinematographer. You know, I didn't really know who was supposed to be in charge of what. I didn't understand that very well. So it was a big learning process for me. Um, but it was very, very rewarding in the end. And I and I was so happy with the final product. Like, it really was exactly what I had created in my mind, more or less. Like, the, the I just really wanted to have a video of, like, movement, kind of, like, expressing the, the way the music moved. And, and Guillermo, my music producer, the, like, the instrumentation he created for that song was so awesome. And it's just so, yeah, like, it really it really inspired me to move. And I just wanted to have, like, a, a, a physical recording of that. And, yeah, I was really lucky to have the team I had on the video. Um, like, the cinematography is incredible. And, like, the ideas that both the director and the cinematographer came up with for different, like, angles and like the beginning shot where they kind of like flipped it upside down was super super amazing like i was just really grateful in the end uh for what everybody brought to the project nice yes i saw it um yeah he made it really cool <laughs> yeah thank yeah. you uh, did you create that body movement i did yeah i choreographed it myself Um, what I ended up doing was I, I choreographed two different versions, one where I stayed on the ground the entire time and one where I was standing the whole time and moving around and then a lot of it was improvisation. Like they filmed me doing like a ton of just different improvisation, just making it up on the spot and then the final edit was just a bunch of like mixtures of all of that. Okay, and how is the music industry in Toronto? It has been affected due to coronavirus or? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, basically no live performance as far as I know for like for a while. I, I don't think we know yet when that'll be a thing again. Um, yeah, it's pretty much kind of like similar to anywhere I think for the most part, like most concerts have been canceled throughout the world until at least 2021. Um, so yeah, for now it seems things are mostly on hold. I mean, you can still record stuff and you can still do, work with people, I think, like virtually and and kind of send things off but um i'm it's pretty much on hold for now i would say there's a lot you can't do as far as like definitely live performances seems to be on hold okay 
Yeah, I hear all these like in standby for the moment. Yeah, yeah. And what is your relationship with the theater? Um, ooh, uh, not very much right now. Uh, I used to, like I said, I went to school for music theater. Um, yes. But gro growing up, I didn't do a ton of theater. Like I was, again, like dancing a lot and I did uh, choir and stuff like that. And I was in like a performance troupe that did like similar to music theater, but not actual musicals. So it wasn't until I went to school for it that I actually got exposed to like real music theater. Um, but I never really ended up doing much work in music theater. I pursued it for a few years after I graduated, but it never really had my full focus. Um, and I didn't really seem to have much luck with it. It just wasn't really like a good fit for me, I don't think. So I, I'm not super involved with theater now. Like I don't audition for it anymore. I'm not really pursuing it, but I do still, there's still some com components of it that I really admire. And, um, but yeah, for the most part, I'm not super connected to that industry anymore. Okay. What's your favorite singer? Oh my gosh. <laughs> David Bowie is definitely uh, like my idol. I, I love David Bowie so much. And even though musically, I don't sing his stuff very often because like vocally, it's not that, it does, it's not really my style, but uh, I, he's definitely had like the largest influence on me um, in my life as, as, a, as a music uh, artist. But I, I lately, like nowadays, I would say uh, Jesse Reyes and Jade Bird. She's um, a British, a British musician, and she's incredible. I, I got to see her live. I got to see them both live um, in the past year, and it was just very inspiring. Very inspiring. Okay. And are you thinking of migrating to USA to consolidate your career, or? Ooh. <laughs> I don't know if that's like possible anytime soon. It seems, especially well, now like the borders are closed and who knows yeah. when they'll be open again and stuff, but I'm not sure. I, I used to definitely really want to move to the States if, if possible, because there's so much opportunity there, but it seems more and more that the music industry in Canada seems to be getting more and more successful. A lot of artists oh. have come out of Toronto in the last decade. So I don't know, I, I, think, mm. I think I'd like to, Stay in Canada, but have access to go to the states to work sometimes and collaborate with artists. Like I'd like my career to get to that capacity at some point, but I don't know. I'm I'm less I'm less like headstrong to like move there and live there fully. I think than I used to be. Okay, and a part of folk and alternative rock, are you thinking to expand your type of music? Sometimes I think about it. I, I mean, I've never, I've never done a song that has like beats in it or like kind of electronic music. Um, so I've definitely thought about exploring that because like I don't see the harm in kind of branching out a little bit. But I, I haven't yet. I would say for the most part because because the way I write is like on my guitar and very like kind of folk. It starts out kind of folky always before I get into the studio when we add the other stuff. Um, I haven't, I haven't exactly figured out like a way to kind of cater to those kind of genres as much. Okay, <laughs> but in the future, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely, I definitely would like to. I definitely want to expand and and uh -huh. explore other genres for sure. <laughs> and what are your future projects? Are you working in a new song or new video clip? So, oh man. <laughs> questions are so hard um, yeah I definitely I want to make a lot of music videos the thing is it's just it uh, it can get really expensive really fast like for me because I'm an independent artist I fund everything I do um, myself like out of my own pocket so sometimes it's just a matter of like I guess trying to figure out a way to do it really like cost efficiently Um, there are definitely people who I, I have in mind who I want to collaborate with to make videos in the future when I guess when it's the pandemic is less um, scary and limiting at the time at the moment but um, I also do I have a lot of music that I've written that I haven't recorded but it's all songs that I've written like about a year ago now so it's kind of tough because I want to write new music again, but then it's like, do I abandon those songs and just never record them and forget about them? Or should I record those and release those? I don't know. I, I, I haven't got a plan at the moment. I'm kind of just like looking at 
the songs I've written, trying to decide, you know, do I want to record any of these? Am I good to just leave them alone and move on to the next phase of my creativity and start fresh and write some new stuff? So at the moment, I don't have any diehard plans. I'm kind of just like thinking about it all. <laughs> <laughs> I hope to see a new video clip of you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Me too. Me too. Are you thinking like doing a song with your mom, something like that? Your mom is also uh, singing. She is. <laughs> she would love that. It would be pretty cool, but I'm, I haven't thought about it as far as like writing a song. Um, but maybe, maybe that's something to think about for the future. Yeah, and I read in a greeting interview that your sister is also a singer. Yeah, or... yeah, she's a singer and she's a dancer. So she lives in uh, Germany. She lives in Berlin. Um, and she's she hasn't been pursuing singing as a career, but she's got a gorgeous voice also. So, yeah, we've talked about my sister, my mom and I have like, oh, we should all sing a song together sometime. But we haven't because when we were when I, my sister and I were kids, I think I was five years old. We made a Christmas music tape with my mom and it's super, super cute. Um, I did not sing on key, I was tone deaf, but, but um, we were like, we should remake that one Christmas and, you know, do them now and better. <laughs> so. well, really cool to have a music family. It is, yeah. I'm very lucky, yeah. Well, thank you so much, Brooke, for this interview. Thank you, thank you. Uh, how can we find you on social networks? I am on Instagram at Brooke Lansner, like just my first name, last name, um, and pretty much the same on Facebook. I have a Facebook music page. I don't really use Twitter very much, but you can find me on Twitter and sometimes maybe I'll tweet something. Um, and yeah, um, Spotify, you can find my music on Spotify, SoundCloud, um, iTunes, Apple Music, and, and yeah. Okay, nice. Yeah. So guys, you know that you can follow us as Gawal Pop on all our social networks. <laughs> Thank you so much, Brooke. Thank you.